Coming up today, we talk about how to solve any problem, what dispatchers have in common with a wedge blocking the front door to your house. Christian tells us an April Fool's horror story, and we play a game of Would You Rather. I'm Chris Collins, this is Christian Lafferty, and that's what's coming up on Service Drive Revolution! I got some gifts, Christian. I love when you get gifts and actually get so gifts. So FedEx actually sent me these cigars that you uh, lost, right? Very nice. They're a little soggy. Yeah. I probably and moldy. I probably didn't get them to you right away. Um, you didn't? Because you know that white stuff on there is mold. So these, literally these cigars are about as wet as... Um, what would be a funny old hillbilly saying? Like, what are the something? And then uh, Dave Brooks sent me this beautiful bottle of tequila. It's Classe Azul Reprosado. Every decanter is a unique piece. This is really good tequila. Not that you would know because you don't drink, but if you did drink, you would understand that this is a really nice gift. The decanter is super cool. I really appreciate it, Mr. Brooks. You wrote a nice little note. I just wanted to drop you a quick note and say thank you for what you do. I've been working in parts with a Ford dealer since 1996. I'm not your typical parts director. I've never worked in service. However, I pride myself with working very close with service. I was raised knowing that service is our best customer. I've had the opportunity to be more involved with service over the last couple of years. My goal is to become a fixed ops director, make our store profitable. This is what drove me to find you. I found you on YouTube about six months ago. I reference your videos almost every day. I've recently enrolled in your online platform and I'm going to schedule my golden ticket as soon as possible. I bought the same bottle of Class A Azul so we can have a virtual drink together. That we will do, Dave, and I can't wait. So when you get our on-demand training in there, you get a golden ticket. What does the golden ticket get them? It gets them. Kind of Willy Wonka, huh? Yeah, it is a little bit Willy Wonka, but it's uh, wonderful. It gets them a strategy session with you. Oh, it's not with you? It can be. I'd love to be on those things. It's great. I have to do it? Well, for now. Oh, jeez. More work for me. Just joking. I love doing strategy sessions. Okay, I have a would you rather before we get going. Yay. Yay. <laughs> would you rather quarantine in Canada? We have two coaches in Canada. Both, did both of them have the vaccine? Uh, I know that Brandon just got his last week. He was, he was one of the last people to get the Johnson & Johnson one. So here's, I mean, I love Canada, but this, this is, they still think Trump's our president and they're still picking on us. Yeah. Because sure. even if you have the vaccine and you don't have COVID, you still have to quarantine in their hotels that they make you pay for. And then they don't serve, like they serve them box lunches. Yeah, TV dinner style. They can't go outside. You can't go outside the hotel room. Yeah, it's like solitary confinement. Hall. It's jail. Yeah, we have two coaches in that situation coming up, which I feel terrible. I do too. Bless Vicky's heart that she will go to Canada and do that because it's, it's terrible. Yeah. It's three days in the hotel room and then 14 days quarantine after that. So okay, so that's number total. one, Christian. Would you rather quarantine for 14 days? And they're not nice hotels either. This isn't like a four-star hotel, right? Right. Number two is, would you rather go be a part of a bachelorette party in Vegas and wear a tutu the whole weekend with a bunch of girls going like doing girl bachelorette stuff. So not a bachelor party, a bachelorette party. And you're dressed in a tutu following a group of girls around as they go from wherever, drunk, whatever they do. You don't drink too, so that would be pretty fun. That's got fun written all over About it. About two in the morning, that mm -hmm. wouldn't be annoying at all. Or number three, get the Johnson & Johnson microchip vaccine. So number one, quarantine in Canada. Number okay. two, go to a bachelorette party wearing a tutu for a weekend in Vegas. And then number three is get the Johnson & Johnson microchip vaccine. Which would you rather do? 
Hmm, a couple of quick questions. Um, do they serve poutine during the quarantine? I don't, it looks like it's the, I don't know, you saw the pictures. It looks yeah. like it, box lunch. It, it looks like what, what the Canadian government does is they buy the food that they're not serving on the airplanes anymore. <laughs> that's exactly what it looks like. That's yeah. great. Okay. Oh, my goodness. Because that's the other thing. Like, we've flown lately, and they don't, um, they don't serve you food anymore. No, it's, it's a gift for them to give you a little bottle of water. It's ridiculous. It is. And then on the bachelorette party, do these women have long hair? Some do. There's like 10 mm. of them. Yeah, because it... Because at two in the morning, I'm going to be the hair holder when they're all yakking. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah for so sure. That could play into it. <sighs> or the microchip Johnson & Johnson vaccine. Which you almost got. You I wanted it. a day it. away from getting it before they pulled it off. Yeah. Well, sorry. There's a reason for everything. I'll get mine. But I'm also not a woman with blood clotting issues. So you say. Not anymore. <laughs> all right. Man, this is a tough one. I, I enjoy doing these because I, I, I feel like I don't give you an option. No. There's, there's, not, a, there's not an easy path here. There's no slam dunk. Um, I'll tell you, me, I'm not doing the quarantine in Canada. There's no way. That definitely sounds like the least appealing. I'm, I'm choosing between microchip vaccine that is, uh, could potentially See, be I horrible. See, I drink, so the bachelorette party thing I think would be pretty fun. Yeah. You, tutu all right with you? I mean, it's not ideal. Yeah, it's not your chosen attire for sure. Unless it was leather. Like a leather tutu would be kind of cool. I don't think you understand what a tutu is. Probably not. I'm not making leather tutus. Is, is the tutu Somebody the... Somebody look that up and send us a leather tutu. <laughs> like with pictures can, attached. Online, everything. you can do just about anything. Yep. I think I'm going bachelorette party. Over the, over the microchip vaccine? Yeah, because I feel like there's going to be some great stories under the bachelor. Unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable. Well, there we have it. Uh, how did you do on April Fool's? So April Fool's, typically one of my favorite holidays. Uh, I, I enjoy a joke. from, from Really? Yeah. yeah, I loved April, April Fool's Day. It's so wonderful. How come I didn't know this? I don't know why we have never talked about it before. but uh, Probably because I hate it. I don't, I'm not surprised by that at all. And I've never been around you on April Fool's Day. I'm always... Ends up on my control phone. Gone, right? Weird. So I was in a store which, uh, with some amazing people. Uh, all of them have great senses of humor and everything like that, right? So in the morning... Um, Wait, what, what state are you in? North Dakota. Okay. So, I think that's context. Yeah, I hope that helps everybody. So in the morning, you one know, of the... Uh, North Dakota is real flat. I'm aware, yeah. There's a... Uh, there's also not a lot of What's people there. What's flatter, Midland, Odessa, Texas, or North Dakota? Because Odessa, you can watch your dog run away for a couple days and you yeah. get one of them. North Dakota has a little bit of a, a hill to it, um, but Odessa is flat, 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 and then nothing grows there really. So there's some True. good times of vegetation in uh, in North Dakota. Farming, yeah, a little bit of farming going on there. A lot of oil stuff. One of the highest. Uh, Oil producing states in the country. Or was. Was. For sure, it's all getting shut down these days. But um, at any rate, so one of the advisors, super awesome, uh, starting it, just finished up a really great month in March and wanted to start April off with the bank. So she brought in uh, um, some donuts for everybody. And, uh, and I'm like, well, normally I don't eat these kinds of things, but maybe today is a special day. So I go and I grab one of the donuts. And uh, I didn't really notice it at the time. You know how that happens, right? So I'm sitting next to one person, and um, I'm, like, kind of eating around. Do you it. sense them snickering? Yeah, a little bit. So I, I start to eat cautiously, right? So I Are eat you aware it. it's April Fool's, or had you forgotten? No, I, did, I hadn't forgotten. I knew. I just... I. You assumed a social contract. Totally assumed. Why you would thought, they like, do These that people me? in North Dakota are so nice. They are. They're, they're super so sweet. Great people. When they ask you, like, how's your day? Like, they really want to know. Yeah. Like, they, they're genuine. It's not, it's not a, you know, just a thing to say. They yeah. really want to know how your day is. Right. It's yeah. not like saying I'm sorry and not meeting it. It's like, really, like, if you need to talk, you'll, they're there for so you. So it's hard to believe that somebody that sweet would do something so deviant. Deviant, evil, super evil. So, so I take a bite of this donut. It's got a chocolate top on it, and then it's filled. It's cream filled, right? 
So I kind of bite around the edges. I'm like, man, this tastes a little bit weird. And they're like, no, no, it's from one of the best uh, bakeries in the, in the town. And uh, I'm like, okay, heck with it. So I take a big bite. And by golly, that wasn't, uh, that wasn't Boston cream in there. It was mayonnaise. Oh, that's gross. It was so disgusting. Um, like mayonnaise mayonnaise or like Miracle Whip? I'm pre- I, I don't know. I'm going to go with it. I think it was regular mayonnaise, but I'm not a mayonnaise expert. You not my a favorite condiment. You that? A uh, decent size, yeah. It was pretty gross. I didn't. I didn't. It didn't make it down. What What happened to you that you're falling off the wagon? That you're eating lots of carbs. You're eating donuts in North Dakota. Yeah. You're skipping the Peloton. What's going on? I don't know. But I at the same. It was like a, there was a point here when like Patricia would say like, "Oh, you can't beat Christian on the Peloton." She did. And then you've been beat a bunch of times since then. I don't know about a bunch of times, but I've been beat once or twice. That's a bunch of times. I did come out of retirement. For a couple never of weeks being ago. able to be beat to being beat a couple of times is a bunch of times. Okay. So I probably have to get back on the horse. The Peloton what happened horse. Though? What's going on in your mind? I don't know. That's great. I didn't know that this was going to turn into a session. Put your feet up and let's talk about what's <laughs> going on in there. See, this is what it's like being what's in North Dakota. What's it's like, happening? They just want to know what's going on. So did they get a good laugh at your expense? Absolutely. And I'm all for it. Did anybody else get the mayonnaise or was it the yes. joke just So here's mayonnaise? my favorite part is that after the joke was up, there was still one bad donut left. And one of the porters actually knew and saw the, all the joke stuff going on. An hour later, it was like he forgot that there was bad donuts. <laughs> Cracked one of the bad donuts and just bit right into it. I swear he ate half the donut in one bite. Ugh. After he already knew. And that was just the pure shock. Like the donut just can't handle it. How did you anything. feel after eating the donut? Like it was my punishment for eating the donut in the first place. You feel sick? No, I spit it out right away. Like as soon as you, you know that it's not right. Ooh. It's pretty gross. Okay, let's talk about dispatch. Still? Yeah. Because Seriously, you still have dispatch is what I'm calling this? Yeah. Seriously. It's like uh, somebody who has an ELR of $60. Right. <laughs> from, from uh, what, what were you, like from Ford? Ford yeah, was like, president? Like if Gerald Ford was president when that ELR was in vogue, you might need to do some adjustments. Yeah. Same thing with dispatch. Like yeah. why would you, first of all, let's talk about why dispatch doesn't work. Because once you're past like 10 technicians, it's humanly impossible for one person to keep everybody going. Second of all, you ne I never hear of a dispatcher working six days a week. So if you're open on Saturdays, Got to you don't have, have an alternative a dispatcher. anyway, right? When, like, everybody always talks about that one amazing dispatcher, like, completely forgetting that the terrible dispatcher they have is in the room. <laughs> yep. <laughs> there are six like I, dispatchers in the Hall of Fame. You experience that all the time where you're like, oh, you know, the dispatcher's there. You're talking about dispatch. And I'm like, dispatch doesn't work. You're like, well, we had this one guy, Tom. He was really good. You know, he kept everybody busy. And, and it's like, yeah, well, Tom's dead. And, you know, Pablo here or whatever is, he's not going to make it. Right. So dispatchers, it's a, uh, you have all this work funneling through one constraint and it it's becomes a, a constraint. For sure. Yep. And it's inconsistent, right? Why? Why would you have a dispatcher? I'm trying to understand why people still today. And what is, what's a dispatcher make? Oh, that's a good question. Like I, on the low end of dispatchers making 50K? I was thinking 40 to 50 and then for sure. There's probably dispatchers making 100K because people just don't know what they're doing. Yeah. And they just kind of. They've survived. Or they've through been the years. there forever. Yeah. Or they're the shop foreman dispatcher or whatever. So I feel like that happens a lot. It's like dispatch is a place where old techs can go to die sometimes. Like they when they're then their hands aren't letting them work on cars anymore and they don't want to be the foreman anymore, they go to dispatch because they understand how the shop works. I think is the theory behind putting them in there. And usually what happens is that your high level technicians make a decent wage, right? So they put them back in dispatch saying, We'll pay you what you made, and that's how they get to that point. I think normally from what I see, it's a, it's a 50K a year job. So 20 years ago, I was getting rid of dispatch everywhere I went. Like I would make the dispatcher. This was my move when I would go into a service department. Guess what I would do the, with the dispatcher before I tell you. Every time I did the same thing. Like Shuttle clockwork. driver. 
No. Mo believe it or not, most of the time, dispatchers aren't that outgoing. Warranty administrator. No. I'm surprised you don't know this. Have you ever met a dispatcher that's super outgoing? Most likely. Like, there might be that one. But in general, not super outgoing. They're oh, usually they're crabby. Introverted. Yeah, they're crabby. What, just the job alone makes people crabby. Yeah, because no one's ever How happy. Long, have you ever known a happy dispatcher? You're going to pay 50 grand to have a guy be miserable. Yeah. And pile more work on him and make him more miserable. So you're going to create this constraint that's miserable, that never smiles, that's introverted, isn't outgoing. It's a constraint. It's an expensive constraint. Extremely. It's like, pay me $50,000, I'll come to your house and I'll put a little wedge in your door so you can't open it. That's what it feels like, why people have dispatch. And then you pay that guy every day to put okay, a wedge Okay, so back to door. my question. Everywhere I went, always dispatcher going away, but I would put him somewhere. I wouldn't let him go. Uh, would you put him in charge of detail and recon? No. Like, I don't even understand why you would think that. I don't know, because you said it wasn't going to be a customer. Most of the time, position. dispatchers aren't handy like that. Okay. Like, that's another thing. How many dispatchers have you known that are good at quality control? I've had a couple. Once again, it's like, yeah, old Tom, it's the dead Tom. guy. Yeah. But no, they're not. So you put them in quality control? They can't. You know, the thing is, they can't quality control because they can't leave their little booth. Yeah, they're locked in there, aren't they, a little bit? Yeah. Such a terrible idea. It's a I don't know who thought of, of that. Didn't like uh, AdCon or whatever do away with that like 40 years ago? Oh yeah, they went to lateral support back in the 80s, I want to say. Yeah, what's, what's going on with people? What was wrong with that lateral Tied support? Tied to it. It was an industry. I have three things and one of them is lateral support. Yeah. That hmm. are better than a dispatcher. Okay, I can guess another one. Okay, but let me tell you what I would do with them. Okay. I'd make oh, them yeah. internal advisors. Yeah, that would work. Yeah, it worked great. <laughs> and guess what would happen to the hours in the shop? They'd go up. They would go up. And we'd sell more, and the advisor, like, we get rid of the constraint. Hours in the shop would go up by eliminating a constraint. Yeah, that makes sense. It's business 101. Pay me $50,000, anybody who has a dispatcher, I'll come over to your house and I'll put a wedge in your door, in your front door. You'll come home every day and you'll be like, oh man, I got to go around the back. And for a year, you can go around the back and then the following year, pay me 60 grand because I'm going to want to raise. I'll come over and put a wedge in your front door again. And every time you come home, you can <laughs> hit the front door and go, oh man, and walk around the back. I'd probably hit my head on the door, actually. That's what having a dispatcher is like. I don't understand. Yeah. Okay, I got three things that are better than having a dispatcher. Okay. And move your dispatcher to an internal. That, that's something we we're going to talk about coming up. About used cars. And we'll talk about an internal advisor when we, when we, when we do that. Okay. The first thing you can do that works better than a dispatcher. And tops, it costs 25 bucks. You can save... 49,000, whatever. 49,975. Yeah, because you're going to spend 25 bucks on a rack. You know those racks you can put ROs in? That spin? And you put them in the, or, no, just, you don't like just the spinny a flat ones? rack up against the wall. And you put them in there in the order they came in. And the, the techs come and get them in the order that they came in. They're organized by RO number? No, by however the advisors put them in order. So there's a way already that they're organized and could be dispatched accordingly? Yeah, like you can do it a bunch of different ways. You can just do it as, as first come, first serve. So whenever the advisor puts it in there, you could, you could split the shop in half and have odd numbers and even numbers on one yep. side. $25. If you need two racks, 50 bucks. Right? Yeah, it's pretty cheap. More and you effective. Only have to do that once. You don't even have to buy a rack a month. What about digital dispatch? I think electronic dispatch is, is doable. You still have to have somebody massage it a little bit. But for $50,000, would you massage it a little bit? Yeah, what of course. What kind of massage would you give me for $50,000? I don't think that we can talk about that on we this can. podcast. Let's be very, very specific. What kind of massage 
would you give me for fifty thousand dollars? A deep, deep tissue massage. Yeah. So you could you could figure out skill levels, op codes. You could spend for fifty thousand dollars. You could spend a weekend figuring out your op codes. Yeah, for sure. Right. Agreed. Okay. So we got a rack for twenty five dollars. Yeah. We got, and I don't know how much, depends on your DMS or whatever. But it's still hundreds, not thousands, Yeah, to turn that system on. And then number three, which really costs you nothing, is lateral support, which is the best of all three of these options. But all three of these are better than having a dispatcher. I don't understand. Yeah. Also, what happens, Christian, when a service manager has a dispatcher and the dispatcher isn't there? What happens? The service manager dispatches. Yes, yeah, so you call the service manager. What's going on? Oh, I've, I got a dispatch this Dispatching week. Dispatching today. It ends up you're dispatching half the year because the dispatchers got some got rare disease. Vacation. Yeah. Oh yeah, They're they, they do have an ailment. You're right about that. Remember this dispatcher I worked with that threw my ROs in the alley. Uh, was a drunk. Yeah. He had. I've told that story. Yeah, with the coffee. Yeah. His his so. He would come in and make coffee before anybody, but he had a coffee thermos. Yes. So one of the other advisors called me in once when he was in the bathroom or whatever, and he goes, and he opens it and we smell it, and it's whiskey. He's putting whiskey in his coffee. Well, I think he's probably actually technically adding a little bit of no, coffee no. to he his had whiskey. 30 techs, probably, somewhere around there. You couldn't find any, all you were doing was calling your customers by one o'clock, telling them it wasn't going to see the shop. Yeah. That was it. You'd write them up and then tell them, you know, good luck. See ya. Good You're going into Joe. the hole. The guy's name was Joe. Good old Joe, the drunk. Yeah, he's not motivating anybody. Everybody pretends like these dispatchers are like some like super motivating football coach. Yeah. Like who would like who would be a football coach that you would know that's super motivating? Like you Rockney. Don Shula. From the Dolphins? I'm just saying that because you're you lived in Florida. Yeah. Yeah. Like they think that the dispatcher is like motivating everybody, firing He's everybody up. It. They're out there doing drills. They're like, you know, everybody's <laughs> 15 drills. minutes early, ready to work on a car. <laughs> no, hard. your dispatcher shows up, sits in his little booth, barely fills out a log sheet, doesn't know where anything is, probably never checks the special order parts. Right. And <laughs> never, forbid. ever. I love that. $50,000, I'll come wedge your front door. It's a constraint. Yeah. It's also absolutely never their fault. Never their fault, ever. That's so funny, yeah. Yeah, so that's my uh, thoughts. I don't, we were in a meeting and everybody still had dispatch. I don't, I don't even understand. They were clinging to it a little bit for sure, but I think there's a couple of people understand. that were starting to, starting to make the turn. Yeah, I was, uh, you know, I've been kind of traveling. I've gotten to go to, to some, uh, some rare... Rural areas. <laughs> Is this your segue to a joke? It might be. I Everybody don't know. Everybody Christian's sure. going to tell a joke. That's right. Here it comes. But uh, but yeah, I was uh, I was I was at this bar in uh, rural Oklahoma. Three legged dog comes in. He says, "I'm looking for the man that shot my paw." I get it. Pretty good. A little corny. I'm glad they didn't spit uh, energy drink all over me. Should we listen to a couple questions? Oh, we got some good stuff, don't we? We got good questions. Yeah. I'm new. I just found you this morning and I'm like, wow, this is so cool. <laughs> um, I have a question and you might have answered this. So please excuse me if I'm, you know, asking something that's already been addressed. I apologize. Like I said, I'm new. All of these things about being a great advisor and I really want to do this and become the best advisor I can. My experience is that no matter how good and enthusiastic and energetic and everything that I am, that I bring to the table, <clears throat> I am obviously directly affected by the attitudes of the other people around me, namely technicians, parts, uh, the lot guys that's, you know, bringing up loaners, whatever. And I wonder what advice you have or your, you know, what, if you could discuss that, um, because I feel like these are uncontrollables for me to give this, you know, five-star perfect service every time 
to each customer. I'm just watching your video about techs quitting in the first two years. And I hear you guys saying that money is not the driving force. And in my experience, that is so not true. These guys, I've been an advisor for a long time in, you know, several dealers. And it's always the same. These guys have awful attitudes. Um, and it all boils down to the same thing, which is they're paid flat rate and they have no control over their money in a sense that, you know, if the writer's no good, if the dispatcher doesn't like them, so they're only dispatching them junk. Uh, there's so much that goes into it. Bad leadership is another one, as you mentioned in your video. Um, but I think the heart of it is that they're flat rate and they really have small little control over how to make that money. Um, the manufacturers want to pay less and less, um, wanting them to diagnose it for free. I'm sure you've heard all this yourself. Then you have, you know, advisors that aren't you, okay? So you're getting whoever, they'll take anybody and throw them in the drive. And um, it's, it's just, there's so much to that. And management is another problem. And uh, the dispatching, because again, you get the favorites, you get the ones that they don't, um, they don't like them. Um, so this idea of having the main, you know, experienced techs mentoring the younger guys is a great idea. I think it's a fantastic idea, but there's more to it. And, you know, you know, unfortunately, I feel like the dealer system is pretty much really broken and needs a lot of tweaking. Just very frustrating. She just described America. <laughs> she really did. <laughs> Nobody wants to take responsibility for anything. It was no one's fault. It's everybody's <laughs> fault. Everybody else's fault. I mean, I I think that there's a, there's a couple things going on here. Is one is, you know, there's there's a locus of control issue, and the locus of control always starts with us. It's not with everybody else. So we're talking a lot about everybody else, but the truth of the matter is, is it's it's about us. And so we either believe that life happens to us or we believe life happens for us. One of the two. And so if we believe life happens to us, then we don't have a choice where we work. We don't have a choice how we interact with others. We don't believe that our actions affect the culture around us, right? And so basically what we have in, in the automotive industry, and I, I do agree with you to some degree, the model's broken, but the model's gonna get changed. Like the model can't survive the way it is for, mu for much longer. But it's renters versus buyers. Like nobody wants to own the culture and the customer experience. Everybody wants to be a renter. So we want to trade time for money, but we, we don't want to own the outcome. And so, yeah, techs are flat rate. That's a great thing for a tech that's super motivated and talented. It's a bad thing for somebody who isn't motivated and talented and if you're a really motivated tech and talented and you're working in a service department with bad advisors, there's a line of dealerships that'll hire you in a second. Like techs pretty much have the cards, like they're holding the cards. If, if you're a really good tech and you, you know, put out quality work and you know how to flag hours, you, you're going to you're going to have a lot of suitors if you want to look. And so they're not victims. They're, they're literally in control more than anything else. And so I just believe that it starts with us and we got to own the culture. And yeah, there's, there's people that trade time for money and they don't care. And there's people that do care, but we have to be the ones that started and care, right? Green. So there's this, I printed out, when I heard this question, I printed out this quote by Dovskieski. 
And I love it. And if you don't know anything, and I'm sure I'm pronouncing Dostoevsky It's wrong. pretty close. Dostoevsky, I think. Is Dostoevsky. Right. There you go. <laughs> he said it all German. <laughs> um, he was Russian, by the way. He was very Russian. It just, I first heard Jordan Peterson say this quote. Um, there is only one way to salvation. And that is to make yourself responsible for all men's sins. As soon as you make yourself responsible in all sincerity for everything and for everyone, you will see at once that this is really so and that you are in fact to blame for everyone and for all things. It's pretty powerful. A little deep. It's pretty powerful. Well, I mean, it's a deep conversation, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I think that that's the thing, though, is when you think about your best advisors, they are endearing to their customers because they own everything from start to finish. If a tech doesn't get something done and they call the customer, they're not blaming it on the tech. They're saying, it's my fault. I gave you a time that I was, it was incorrect and I'm so sorry and here's what I'm going to do to make it right. And they always own every portion of the outcome, right? They're checking their cars before they're giving it back to them to make sure that it's clean, all the reminders are reset and everything like they're owning every little bit of it. But I, I believe that in this age of renters that people really appreciate owners. And as an advisor, if you're an owner, you're going to be a, you're going to be a head, head and shoulders above the rest of the group. I, I just believe that you can't fix any problem in society without both sides taking responsibility. So let's just say you want to fix the reincarceration rate here in Los Angeles. And I'm just throwing out a, a random analogy to, to make this point. So the reincarceration re rate of somebody who goes to jail and then ends up back in jail is like 60%. Now, we can put programs in place. We can, we can educate them coming out of prison. We can give them um, a guaranteed job when they get out. But unless that person wants to change, Unless that person actually wants to take advantage of those resources, it isn't going to work. And it's the same thing with, you know, giving everybody checks and extending unemployment and extending their, their rent and all that. The truth of the matter is, is those things only work in a society where people are actually trying to find a job. But we have a scenario where a lot of people aren't they're not even looking for jobs because they're making more on unemployment than they were working. And so you can't fix a situation unless both parties are willing to accept responsibility for what's going on. It can't just be a one-sided thing. In every scenario, in every business that I've ever gone in to fix, I cannot fix the business if the people running the business don't actually want it fixed. And I run into this all the time where people want Chris Collins and they want to hang out with Chris Collins and they want to drink tequila and smoke cigars with Chris Collins, but they never really wanted to fix their business. And it's one of the most annoying things I have to endure is I actually want to fix stuff. I want to learn. I, I want to see how fast can we fix it and how, how big of a turnaround can we do? Like, and then, you know, Nobody, nobody really wants to fix it. Just like people buy diet books, they do all this stuff, but they never actually, you actually don't need a diet book. The truth of the matter is, is there's nobody watching this that doesn't know how to lose weight. There's nobody watching this that doesn't understand that if you eat right and you exercise, you will lose weight. That's it. You don't need a, you don't need a diet book. You don't need any of it. Like it's pretty simple. We're just looking for that thing to give us permission, that thing to, you know, have, have that, you know, keeps us interested or whatever, right? Yeah, for sure. What would you call it? Nostalgia? What is it that, like, it's just new, right? If yeah. it's packaged and it's new, then we're excited about it. But the truth of the matter is, is you're going to work out and you're going to eat right. Right. That's the basis of every diet. It will be the basis of the next diet for sure. Yeah, but they just give it a cool marketing name and a new thing like, oh, you can eat cheeseburgers with no bun or whatever, but you're, you know, you're cutting out the carbs. It's all the same. Yep. Right? I agree.
So she, you just described America. Stuff. What do you think? Are you going to add anything to that, or did I rant too much? You, you did a healthy rant. I, I feel like there's not too much else to add to that other than, uh, than you know, owning it is so liberating. I, I just go, I go back to this analogy over and over again. I, in our leadership training, I, I talk about this. Is I go to Chicago during the winter, pre-COVID, and if I'm there a week, if I'm there two weeks, I don't know, 50 people will say to me in a week's time, oh, you're going back to California. Take me with you. I can't do another winter here. The winters here are miserable. I can't do it, blah, blah, blah. And everybody say like, yeah, come with me. Nobody comes to California. I don't understand why you would live in Chicago and bitch about the weather. Like, you know the weather in Chicago. I know if I'm moving to Chicago, the first thing I'm doing before the moving truck shows up is I'm accepting the fact that the winters are terrible and the summers are worse, by the way. This year you have the cicadas or whatever. What are they called? Cicadas, the, yeah. The biblical end of times. <laughs> if you've ever experienced just walking on big red cockroaches. Such a nasty crunch. So gross. Yeah. So the summers are worse, honestly, with the humidity and everything. It's like, I'm over it. I'm not going to go there and then bitch about the weather. Right? Yeah. So... It's on you. Like, accept the responsibility and make everybody around you better. And if they won't get better, fine, go somewhere else. It's pretty simple. Yeah, you choose where you want to be. But, I, I mean, we have hundreds of clients in automotive and in truck. And there are a lot of great places with a lot of great leaders in environments where people are motivated. They care about each other. The culture is really good. Those do exist out there. So you just got to find it, right? I agree. Got to find your home. See, now I went on another rant from my other rant. That was a rant? And you still haven't had anything. You still haven't said anything. <laughs> like very okay, let's go to the last question and we'll wrap it up. Hey, Chris, this is Austin here uh, in Florida. I'm uh, starting my journey in um, the service drive, and I have two offers, uh, one Ford, uh, uh, Auto, Auto Nation Ford, which would be a bigger store, and then one short, uh, Gordon Chevrolet. Um, uh, you know, I got a small store versus a uh, bigger store. Uh, one's got an hourly rate of about twelve bucks, and at max four and a half percent. And then compared to a solid base pay of eight fifty uh, for the entire month, and then. You know, a tier system starting out at six and a half percent, all the way up to if I hit KPI, ten uh, percent. You know, I don't know what I should take. Uh, I know it's a pretty detailed question, but um, start small or go big, brother. You tell me. I've got a couple of thoughts on this. Okay. All right. So the first thing I would say. Can you do it more in a rant style, though. Yeah. So Austin, here's what I would tell you. The pay plan is probably not the primary thing that you want to do here. What you want to find is the environment that it's going to allow you to grow, to learn the business the right way, and to be around people that can adopt you as mentors. So what I would say is before you take either job, I would take two days. I would spend one day at the first dealership at the big store, and then I would spend one day at the small door, small store. Watch how they interact with each other. Watch how the manager uh, coaches his people or her people and see if... One of those two is the environment that you fit in and then kind of go from there. And then the thing I would say is, you know, look for an opportunity where you can learn. Because I do think that the position of being a service advisor is not something you get in a day. It's not something you get in a month. I really think that you have to invest in the career over a year. So look for the place where you think you're going to be able to grow the most. And Isn't he in tech? No, it was an advisor job. Oh, really? Mm hmm I would go with the non-auto nation. Would you? Mm -hmm. Okay. Why? I don't. I don't want to get like I don't want to get in a fight with AutoNation, but I just wouldn't. Fair enough. <laughs> I did not expect you to say that. That's what great. do you mean? <laughs> I wasn't sure if you had more reasoning. So big store, small store doesn't matter to you in terms of uh, volume and everything like that. I always thought it was easier to learn in a smaller store. I feel like the the advantage 
is whatever you make it. I think you could have a huge advantage in a small store and you could have a huge advantage in a big store. The only thing that's hard is if you're the only advisor in a small store, that's hard because you can't take lunch. You can't like, that's a hard thing. You're right. Right. Um, but beyond that, I think you could have just as much fun in a small or a big store. How was my rant? It wasn't a rant, bro. Dang it. You're just, it's like, you know, wise advice. That's it. All right. Fun though. I'll get better. That was fun. You guys. Thanks for tuning in and we will see you next time on service drive revolution. Thanks so much for watching this episode of Service Job Revolution. We're uploading new stuff every day, so make sure you subscribe and click the bell icon so you don't miss out. If you have a question you'd like us to answer on the show, call 8333-ASK-SDR and we'll answer your question on the show. That's 8333-ASK-SDR. For special deals on our books and training, head over to offers.chriscollinsinc.com. Now that's offers dot chriscollinsinc.com. I'm Chris Collins and I'll see you in the next video.